At the moment, Mr. Mullin, we're being led here by the neck by the Home Secretary. I don't mind telling you. I'm simply instructed to inform him of my views. You've been busy. So have you. Not really. I'm interested in the planters. Tell me about the young one. Was he ever convicted? I can't say. When you get to him, you're down to five, six people. They'd be very upset. Nevertheless, this is the one I want to hone in on. There were no numbers ever put on the bombers, but if this man's account is true, then obviously the six are innocent. There's at least one I know of fits the bill, but I can't be certain unless you confirm he was convicted. I think it's him. There's a limited number of candidates. We're going on the age. Nineteen at the time. And the details of other bombings. It's essential we try and corroborate this. I'm no more at liberty to disclose my sources than you are yours. What you don't realise is how many of the people you've been talking to were singing the heads off for us. Then they will have told you that the six were not members of the IRA. After the pub bombs, they were singing to save their own necks, believe me. We picked a few up the following year. I expect you've seen one of them. What about the second planter? Z. You say very little about him. There's a limited number of candidates. One. Michael Christopher Hayes. You haven't answered my question. Am I to understand that the police now accept that the six were not members of the IRA? We never said there were. Yes, you did. According to the police at the trial, Walker was a brigadier. McElkenny, a captain, and the other four lieutenants. I can give you chapter and verse on that. Perhaps you care to name a single bombing that was carried out by people who weren't in the IRA. That's not in my remit. Superintendent Maffin is remarkably well informed. I don't want to know, Chris. Anonymous confessions aren't evidence. It won't get the six back into court. Yes, but you do realize that if he's right, and I'm not saying that he is, would mean that the police have known and planted the bombs for some considerable time. I had a load of this, Home Office. I'm sorry to say there was an error in the information provided to World in Action scientists. The strength of the caustic soda solution was given as 1%. Subsequently, when further inquiries were made about Dr. Skews's method, it became apparent the concentration used was almost certainly, almost certainly, mind, 0.1% and not 1%. Good, eh? Gets forensics off the hook. One percent works with playing cards. You can bet your sweet life that point one percent won't. No. Who do they think they are? Talk about shifting the goalposts. It's for me, Tom Clark. Yes, policeman, I think. When did you leave the force, then, Mr. Clark? I uh, thought we'd covered everybody. Oh, well, gentlemen, thereby hangs a tail. I was accused of stealing five pounds from a prisoner. I make no secret of it. The jury found me guilty. Though I will protest my innocence till my dying day. They were not allowed to sleep for one minute during their time at Birmingham Police Station. And what with that and the, the dogs barking every two or three minutes, they did not rest. What was the demeanour of the officers in dealing with the prisoners? Very aggressive. Well, you know, uh, uh, can you swear? Yeah, you say anything you want. Uh, Irish bastards, and so on and so forth, all night long. You name it, it was said to them. 
And of course, occasionally, the guns got put through the flaps on the cell door. God knows what those men went through. With guns aiming at them through the spy hole. A shotgun through the door? Periodically. Through the night. Every time. Stand up. And you personally saw that? Yes. Get your white coat on, Charlie. I think we've got another show. Mullins found himself a talking policeman. He's not talking a few shouts either. He's talking guns, dogs, the works. I don't know how he does it. Well, yes, I do know how he does it. He writes to the Birmingham Post. Parliamentary candidate seeks honest copper. Can you believe that? Stop the Christ, this guy's telling the truth. Why the white coat, if you don't mind my asking? Well, you, you got your formula wrong, didn't you? Right. And guns. What are you on about? But yeah, yeah, listen, listen to this. The next thing I knew, I had a shotgun pointed at me through the flap in the door. I was continually threatened throughout the night with the shotgun and other handguns. I tell you, Charlie, even Chris is excited about this. <laughs> His eyes were like... You know, were like eyes. What did you say? I asked you what you were on about. The forensics. After months of careful research, the Home Office has decided to change the formula. That's ridiculous. It was checked at the trial. So, find out who checked it and get him on camera. Dr. Black, you're convinced that the formula used was 1%. Where did you get that from? It comes from the notes I took when I saw Dr. Skews. Now, I could not have made a mistake. He could not have told me 0.1%, which I transcribed as 1%. What was the state of the men when you next saw them? Well, there were bruises underneath the eyes. Their faces were puffed out. There were physical changes. Physically, they were different men from the Friday night. No question of it. Will the minister confirm that the retirement of Dr. Skews, three days after the World in Action program, was far from voluntary? Is not this matter being hushed up to avoid a scandal? No. I utterly repudiate any suggestion that this matter has been hushed up. Mellon's getting rattled. First, he tells the House that Skews was pensioned off with limited efficiency. Then he says that he retired voluntarily. As for the Home Secretary, it seems that he's been frustrated in his efforts to reach a speedy decision because we keep pestering him with more evidence. I've been ringing around the wives. Love the show, but same old question, when's something going to happen? Thirteen years soon. Christ knows how they survive. I thought we might press for a decision before the Christmas recess. Spirit of the season and all that. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them a light has shone. For to us a child is born. To us a son is given. And the government will be upon his shoulder. And his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. On David's throne he will reign and over his kingdom. To establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness. From this time forth and forevermore, the zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. As the House will be aware, the safety of these convictions has since been challenged, notably in two World in Action programmes and in a book published by Mr. Chris Mullin in June last year. I have examined all the material with great care. I am satisfied that there is new evidence that will justify my referring this case to the Court of Appeal, and I have now done so. Thank you. Thank you.